it's at one over two. But I have to write the constant in front. Good. One over two. Excellent. The square root of, yes. Anyone? Okay, so when we left off there with those again, you, you left off when you said you have to make sure you put that thousand down there and then do like the thousand constant and then do the derivative yes. of the other part. Good. So what do I write? I'm going to guess it's probably going to be wrong. X minus 0.1. So let's review the formula. Okay. So the square root of a function prime is 1 over 2 the square root of the function times the function prime. Oh. So is that to be x squared minus 0.1x? Good. QX minus 0.1. Excellent. Good. At this point, we're asked to find the rate of change. We already found it. But now, they want us to find it when X is 20 units. What do you think we need to do? I mean, wouldn't we just plug in 20 for X? Absolutely. Absolutely. Here it is, in y equals, clear whatever you have. And let's punch in very carefully, very carefully, 1,000, parentheses, 2x. Kimmy asked me last time, it's only 1. Why do you plug it in? I don't know. It's easier for me to see it. She's right. So you don't really have to, but I think it's easier to see the function, make sure that the function is entered correctly. But she's right. If you only did, if you only evaluate it for one value, why do you care to put it in y equals? So she's correct. So it's up to you. You do what you want. So parentheses, 2, the square root of x squared minus 0.1x. I close the parenthesis for the square root, which for this calculator doesn't need, but for others, and I don't know which make and model, I mean, I know what make you have, but I don't know which model you have. So I, I like parentheses. You know, already know that. So I go to second and table, and I punch in 20. Okay, so what do I get? Is 1000.00. Okay, so just 1000. So r prime of 20 is 1000. What is the measurement unit? This is super important. What is the measurement unit for any rate of change? Um, is it unit per, mm, or thousands of dollars per unit? Brilliant. But yes, I have to mention thousands. Yes. It's the measurement unit of R over the measurement unit of X. Always two measurement units, please, for the rate of change. Great job. Any questions? Any questions? OK. Good. So let's uh, look at the next, and then I will ask you to upload one little thing. Let's get to it first. Last and final section of this chapter. It was really long. It's entitled Higher, Higher Order Derivatives. Why? Why do we need this? So is the first derivative not good enough? No. And you'll see why in the next few chapters. 
I can have the second derivative, which is the derivative of the first. I can have the third derivative, which is the derivative of the second. But who cares about this? Well, if I have the distance function as an example, let's say f of x, if I want to find the velocity function, I will find f prime. And if I want to find the uh, acceleration, I will have to find the second derivative of the distance or the first derivative of the velocity. So velocity prime as an example. So these are called higher order derivatives. We are just differentiating the function, the first, the second, the third, whatever they want us to determine. Yes, corresponding to this notation, we have the Leibniz notation. So the first derivative is the same with dy over dx as we know from last week. But the second derivative is no, denoted like d2y over dx2. And you can say, well, why is this uh, um, up here and this here? Why not here? Well, because actually the notation is this, okay, of dy over dx. So it's the derivative with respect to x the second time of the first derivative with respect to x. So keep this in mind, d2y dx2 is the same with the second derivative. And of course, the third derivative will be the same, d3y over dx3. OK, so on page 179, let's practice this. Everything is the same. We're just differentiating the same function more than once. With the same rules, no new rules, nothing new here. So for example, 31, page 179. And we have a function, y equals x to the sixth minus x to the third plus 2x. They want us to find, look at this, d5y over dx5. OK, fine. Not a big deal. So we don't have to use this notation if you don't want to. We can if you want to. So let's find y prime. Can anyone give us y prime? Would it be 6x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus 2? Brilliant. Can anyone give us the second derivative? Professor, I had a question. Yes. Um, did the 5 come from 6 minus 1, right? Yes, exactly. Like like the 2. The 2 came from 3 minus 1. Okay, thank you. Yes. Would it be 30x to the 4th? Brilliant. Minus 6x. Done, because the constant prime is 0. Very good. Can anyone give us the third derivative? Uh, Brandon, you are, Brandon, you are not banned. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't want you to think that you were banned to answer. Sorry about that. I know it's all good. So I guess 120. Oh, I was, Yeah. Okay. Rachel wanted to my, say that. Okay. Oh, my bad. She no, it's okay. Okay. Minus six. So we have the first, the second, the third. They want us two more to, to determine. Fourth. Now, we can also write this. So this and this, this that do not mean powers. okay? Or you can now, from this point on, you can write, if you want, d4y over dx4. So that's why this notation is somewhat, after a while, more convenient than this and this. The Roman and parentheses 4, you may think, oh, what is this? It's power 4. It's just a notation, so maybe this one is better. Can anyone give us this? 360x squared. squared. Very good. Finally, the last one, d5y over dx5. 720x. That's it, and it's done. 
So it's not a big deal. Once we know the rules, this is really nothing. And I like to look at a word problem, of course, with anything. We can look at population and sales. and But let me look at first the velocity and acceleration one. And then we'll look at a word problem, another word problem. OK. Any questions? Do you want me to stop or explain anything? Are you OK, everyone? Okay, so we are given the distance formula, which is t squared minus 1 half t plus 3. This is in meters. Time, they say, is in seconds. We are asked to find part A, the velocity in part B, the acceleration, and the velocity and acceleration when t equals 1. Can anyone help here? Can anyone give it a shot on uh, on the velocity? It's velocity 2t minus 1 half. Perfect. Let's plug in 1 already so we determine this. So that will be 2 minus 1 half. From $2, we subtract 50 cents. So this must be 1.5. But I'm super interested in the measurement unit. Anyone can get that 1.5. Very good. Awesome. Meters per second. Great job. Good. Now let's determine the acceleration, which is the rate of change. So this is the rate of change of the distance with respect to time. This is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. What will that be? Would that just be 2? Exactly. Now plug in 1 and tell me what you get. <laughs> Measurement unit. Careful. This is the rate of change of velocity over time. So we cannot have the same measurement unit. It's velocity over time. So is that like, would that be the speed over time? No. So, so it's meters per second per second. So when so you meters per second squared. Yes, because you flipped the denominator. Very good. So please remember the measurement unit for velocity, in this case meters per second, but the acceleration is the, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Velocity with respect to time. The top velocity, bottom time, meters per second squared. Professor Lee. Yes? Um, for the submission today, and you put it the one day today as Monday, February 21st, and then you, so you flip them. You flip Monday and Wednesday. I did? As an order, yeah. you mean? Yeah, so like it says that the one do, that's supposed to be due February 21st is due today. Uh, maybe I just uh, put the wrong date in there. Okay, so you would still want us to do the... Yeah, I will, I will change it. Just uh, put the one that is for today, and I will change the name, of course. Sorry about that. My mistake. And then do you want us to submit this problem? Yep. This problem is good. Just this, one page. Just okay. this. Just to make sure you copied correctly the measurement unit, I'm giving points to you for copying correctly. I'm happy to do that. And then I would like to look at a so sale. Say it again. So upload this question. Just this. Yes. Just this one page for credit. Just to make sure you're copying correctly. Especially the measurement units. 
And then I would like to, in the meantime, let me try to open my book again, maybe. Maybe this time I can. There will be too much to ask. So are we, are, just, just, just to clarify, are we uploading this into the one? The one that, that, is, uh, that is open for today. They're both technically open, but the one that's going to close out tonight, you want us to use that one? Yeah. Okay. And let's look at uh, some uh, sales. Should I still wait? Oh, yes, please. We're still uploading on February 16th, right? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. About that, I probably messed up something in there. I'll I'll double check. So I picked. Uh, we can do both. I picked sales, and then we can look at population. Let's do both, sales and population. See why we are even looking at derivatives at all. Okay. Can we start the sales? So a company said they say a company determined that monthly sales S of T sales um, are in thousands. Okay. Of dollars, of course. Uh, after T months, of marketing a product are given by. So we have S of T, 2, T to the third, minus 40, T squared, plus 220T, plus 160. We're asked to find S prime of 1. They're ask us to asking us to find s prime of two, s prime of four, just one of them, and the second derivative at one, and interpret the meaning of s prime of one and s double prime of one. Okay, can anyone help with s prime of one? When did you find the derivative first? Though? Yes, of course, absolutely. I cannot find S prime of 1 before I find S prime of T. Brilliant. Yes, thank you. Uh, 6 T squared, 80 T, and that's it? No, 20, 220, and then that's it. Good. So now we will plug in S prime of 1. And we get 6 minus 80 plus 220. So this is 140, 146. What does this represent? Of course, it's in thousands of dollars. But this is not the measurement unit for a rate of change. Thousands of dollars per month. Excellent. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Good. So now can anyone help with the second derivative of t? Well, t minus 80. Very good. And now s double prime of 1 is 12 minus 80. And what is that? Is it um, 68 with negative? Yep. Good. Measurement unit. So it is thousands per, remember? Month square? Exactly. Okay, it, yes? Uh, we're not putting one in for T, right? We're just taking the T out and doing the 
um, subtraction or addition to the problem? Uh, say that again. Uh, ask the question again. I'm sorry. Well, how do you 